Greg, um, what about January then? It's been it's been busy. So many players out and and so many in. What what is this time like at the football club's point of view when it's been as busy as it has? It's it's hectic for everybody, you know. And uh, but along the way, we 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 think we're make, we're 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 making headway and making progress. And when I looked at the paper this morning. I seen Notts County in tenth position, with one game in hand on some and two games in hand on others, and only one win away from the playoffs. And in respect to that, I think the progress made from the day that Sean and myself walked in is massive, in terms of the football club. You know, and um, we think that a lot of changes had to happen, and 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 the January and the transfer window is a period of change. But if you if you go back to where we were as a team. And, and where we are as a team, and where we want to be as a team, things have to take a period of time to, to make them changes happen for the greater good. And along the way, you know, there was a lot of expenditure that Ray and Aileen put into this football club that probably we didn't get value for money for. And the remit at the moment is to is to try and protect that period and, and claw a little bit back with a view. And, and we've had this from the chairman, we've had this from from Aileen that next season we can we can really have a really good push at it. But in the meantime, we need to give fans something to be optimistic and encouraged about. And our position of 10th in the table, again, just outside the playoffs in terms of one one victory, I think is an incredible achievement. And, and I don't pay tribute to any individual in that. I pay tribute to the whole of the football club, <coughs> from Ray and Aileen right down to the, to the youngest apprentices, because Football people don't win as, as, as individuals and they, they don't lose individuals, they, they win and lose as a unit and we've needed the support of everybody from this football club and we've had some really big discussions with, with the chairman and, and Aileen and Jim about how we feel the club's best should best operate and it takes you through different periods and, and the period we're at at the moment is a period of, of probably indifferent results and indifferent performance. And the loan window couldn't have come quick enough for, for, for Notts County Football Club because we'd just hit a really good period where we were happy with the loan signings we got. The team was playing to its strengths. Um, it, it was tough to beat. Maybe wasn't as fluent and maybe wasn't as, as attackingly exciting as we'd like it to be. But if you remember the point I was saying about the financial implications and the money that we, we, we felt was, was, was not got value for money for in, 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 in a previous period, we had, to, we had to bring our levels of, of finance down in terms of players we had to go out and sign. And if you want to talk about the window, the window's vital to every club, but to us it was even more important because our loan signs had to go back and they were pretty successful for us. You know, the Louis Langs and the Steve McLaughlins and, 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 and Jake Cassidy's, and they all made their contribution. But what they did, they fitted into a team that was hard to beat and was winning a lot of games. I think getting to fourth in the table probably was an overachievement and, and, and probably we're not right now as we speak a top four team. We aim to be and this is where the next step of, of recruitment comes in and what we've done is we've again we've gone out into the into the into the market and we know we've needed a centre forward. We've known all along we've needed wide players. You know we think we think Will Hayhurst with all the homework we and, and, and information we had about Will would have been a permanent one. So we've We've sort of said to the chairman and, 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 uh, and Aileen and, and Jim, if we can find players that we think can take the f club forward at the right age that will help us, that helps them, and maybe develop and, and, and progress their careers, it means Notts County prospers. And so we, we took Will Hayhurst in and I thought Will was terrific on Saturday. And for the first time, I think centre forwards knew the ball was going to arrive in the box and there was something for them to get on with. And we looked like scoring on Saturday for the first time in a number of matches, properly looked like scoring with the chances that Tomo missed and it will miss one and Kwame missed one, which it's better to be creating chances and missing them than not making them at all. You, you, you tend to get worried because if you go a goal down, how do you win a game? And so there were areas that, that Sean and I had identified and, and were looking for, and, and Alfie made his contribution um, with his with his with his first half and a bit in the second half, and he's young and he's he's he's, he's, he's raw, and again the money's involved in Kwame and and, and Alfie were were minimal. You could put the whole of our team together and it wouldn't cost £10,000 a week. So that's what we're fighting against. And I'm not here to make excuses and, and give reasons as to why we aren't that. But I think any sensible football fan and football person can see that there's a gulf there that needs bridging. And you can't just bridge it with players that are coming in and five and six hundred. But again, to my, to my statement that we have to be sympathetic with our budget to make sure we claw back some of the, some of the, the monies that's not been well spent. And, I, and that's not a, 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 a slant on anybody. That's a, 
it's an absolute fact. It's an absolute fact in in the in this football club over the last uh, 12 to 18 months. I've never ever blamed anybody in football. You are what you are, and maybe Sean and myself wouldn't be here if that money had been you know better spent and better players had come in and there was more success. We probably wouldn't be here because the club would be you know no need for any change. So that's where we were, and, and, we, and we also got Kwame in who we needed a centre forward, and Kwame's work rate. Um, I thought on Saturday was 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 fantastic. The way he won the penalty from, if you look at it on closely on the TV, he was nowhere near the ball, but nicked in. The player didn't know he was there and gets a penalty. And you know, if he gets that and scores his little goal at the other end, it's a fantastic debut for him. So that's part of where we are in in the window. But we've always talked about bringing in permanent players as well at the right age. You know, to to make sure that the squad going forward is, is, is already being start to be built. I mean, we're building for next season as we speak, but we need players for now because we had to improve the results that had gone on the last four or five weeks. And that's why I don't know if you've seen my celebration, Sean's celebration Saturday, ridiculous, absolutely embarrassing. That 51 year old can, can, can just lose his head completely for 20 seconds. And, but I didn't mind because it's for the good of the club that we needed Saturday's result. It didn't really matter how we got it on Saturday. We needed that win to regain the momentum that we'd built up. But the transfer window, I think, is an unfair period for League One clubs because we need the transfer window to come two to three weeks early because we'd lost Stephen, we'd lost Louis, you know, Jake had gone back. And, you know, going into the Bristol City game, I think it's the first time I can remember since probably up to about 15 games before the end of last season, there was almost an acceptance that we were going to lose the game from our team on Saturday at Bristol City. I think the team actually realised that we needed strengthening and we needed help. And I have to say that Ray and Aileen have already identified that and came to Sean and myself before that game and said there's X amount of pounds to, to, to reinvest in the squad for now, right, to make sure we regain some of the momentum we had. Maybe not to win the title because probably what we've got isn't going to be enough to win us the title, or, or, but it might be enough to creep on the heels of the big boys. And I think that the signings that have been made and, and the ones that we're still trying to do, because there's still more in the pipeline hopefully, will see us gain that momentum and give the fans optimism and encouragement for the club being steered in the right direction. And you know what? We've been a little bit upset, me, Sean and myself, about some of the performances. And I absolutely almost plead with the supporters to be patient with us and show an understanding of what's happening and what was happening when we came in on November the 7th, 2014 to what is happening now on January the 19th, 2015. There's been an unbelievable improvement and progress from the football club. Not trying to pat Sean on the back here or myself on the back. I'm trying to say an absolute massive well done to everybody. And Part of the reason I don't want to be transparent here and I want you to put me on the spot and I want to talk from the heart and I want to talk the truth is them supporters last season were unbelievable. That's why I want to tell them exactly what's going on at this football club so they're in no way, shape or form being left without the information I think they deserve. And that, and that is because of the, the Oldham performance from the supporters, the, the Warsaw performance from the supporters when we got beat 5 at home and they clapped us. The performance at Rotherham when Sean and I went over and we got applauded. For me, at the where I come from, if you're looked after by somebody, you have to look after back. And it culminated, the final piece was when um, I went into the navigation pub after the Oldham game and was treated like I've never been trapped before in a long, long time. I know we'd survived, I know we'd won, I know everybody's elated, but the, res the respect afforded to me that night by about 20 Notts County fans, I'll never forget it. So I have to talk, like I'm talking now, to give them everything I think they deserve for that. You know, and, and I, th them times for me will make this club stronger. And if we can get the fans to understand some of the, the, the moments that aren't quite so good, you know, but see the bigger picture and see what's happening at the club for the greater good, I think the club will stand itself in, uh, in, in, in real good, you know, in real good stature for the, for the periods to come the future to come because it's not all about this season or next it's about a period where Notts County's got to grow and progress we progressed really quickly it's steadied off over November December hopefully the signings coming in um, will improve what we're doing that's probably the longest answer to any question I've ever given just hit 10 minutes so you've done just well 10 minutes that's not <laughs> bad it's it, when you talk about the importance of those permanent signings and the young players and the, the planning ahead Inevitably, a club like Notts County the last couple of years has been heavily reliant on loan players, Callum McGregor and Jack Grealish perhaps particularly last season and again at the start of this. Is your aim that by this time next year you're not going to end up seeing such a big change to the squad in January because 
loans have come to an end and so on, and they've got enough permanent permanent players in to be able to avoid that, or is that just an inevitability for a club at this level? It's, it's inevitable that you'll need one or two, absolutely inevitable. But what we're trying to do is do our work early, find the, 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 the players early and, 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 and have maybe only two lone players in your club at any one point because lone players are, at the end of the day, they're not your players. We want our own players that care about this club like, like Sean and like I do and like the owners do, you know, that, that they're going to give everything for this club. Now, I'm not saying the, the, the loan signings haven't because I think they genuinely have. I think they've been excellent. But we want to be able to, to develop and progress our team and, and the loan sign is, is it the icing on the cake, if you like, the one player that might do something special in a game that we probably can't afford within our financial structure that we've got, you know, the special player, the, the Jack Drealish or the Callum McGregor, you know. But what we want to do, basically, is, is develop our squad, you know, and I think that's developing, you know, Will at 20 is coming in, you know. We'd love to be able to entice Louis Lang, that type of person, that type of player, that type of age group, to our club because we think we can grow and develop with that sort of player. You know, you look at your back four, it could, you know, you could have a 20-year-old right back at two centre-halves at 20, 21. You've got Blair and Jordan Cranston, 21 and 20 between them. And then you look through your midfield and, and that's another area where we're trying to get in players that'll, that'll be here for the long haul. And, and hopefully, not people like Gary Jones and not people like Alan Smith and not people like Gary Thompson out of the team because they're developing and they're better. But, you know, the role that them three have played has been significant and fantastic for the development and, 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 and the period that we're in now where we've needed a little bit of help. Because I think their attitude and their influence and the way they've conducted themselves have been excellent. But it'd be fantastic if they were all 10 years younger and they were going to be part of the club that's going to take us right to the top of the League One initially. And then maybe it's even further. But you've got to be a little bit restrained on how quick progress is made because you know that's the first step is to to, to build a team that can that can leap leap out of this league and you've seen some of the big clubs struggle the Leeds United's the Sheffield, Sheffield Wednesday's the Sheffield United's the, the Bristol City's they've all struggled to get out of this league it's a really tough league you know so we've got to make sure that we we, we give the right information to the to the chairman um, and tell him what we're doing and I have to say He's been absolutely 100% receptive to almost everything we've told him and tried to implicate and endorse what we're doing and supported what we're doing. And in that respect, the whole club is making progress. And so your answer to the loan thing is we wouldn't want to build a team on loan. We want to build a team on, on our players that if they do well, they don't go back, back to, their, to, the, to their parent club and go to the Championship or the Premiership or they get sold. We develop them and we end up selling them. You know, and if we're selling players, it means that the club's making progression because they're attracting the, the, the interest and attention of the people because they're doing really well on the field for Notts County. Is there something in the game that should change? Whereby, because at, at the moment, lower league clubs are so reliant on loan players, which inevitably come from the more powerful big clubs, and they've often got, you know, Premier League clubs have often got 20, 30 players out on loan at a time. Should that balance be redressed? Should there be something that changes that helps lower league clubs have players on a permanent basis, which enables you to build for the future? Well, I think that, again, that comes to you, to, down to your recruitment. And again, it's another area of the football club that we've addressed. There was no recruitment. Uh, so it should be on the clubs, not on any rules in place that could No, I, I, No, I think it's because what, what we have to do as, as, as lower league clubs is every time people get released, at the, I mean, we've got, we've got people like Aston Villa, uh, Wolves, Birmingham, Leicester, you know, Forest, Derby, all on our doorstep and what we've got to do as a club is we've got to look at the, the, 20, the age 20s and 21 age players that get released and our recruitment has to be spot on and what we've done is again we've in, informed the chairman that we believe Sean and I believe that a, a head of recruitment is absolutely imperative so we've, we've, we've actually just as we speak trying to you know, make sure that, that, that some person comes in and I think there's somebody hopefully going to be announced later on this week that's going to take care of that side of, of the business so that helps my knowledge and Sean's knowledge of players by actually being directly involved or responsible for bringing young players into the club. Now, I think what we've got to do is, you know, you, you can't expect Premiership clubs to put all the money into a player and the development of a player and then a League One club takes the money for that player making his way in the game. What we've got to do is anybody that's not quite going to make it at, le at Premiership level, we've got to nip in. Can we sign him? Can we develop him? And we get the rewards then. 
rather than you know so I think you've got to do your recruitment um, uh, and, and, and have a, a massive structure in place to develop that part of it because I think what Notts County need to do is is to go out there and find players that we can develop and sell on that are actually our own because you'll never change the rule of, of, of League One clubs getting any benefits out of, of, of developing Premier League clubs it is actually that's why you get a favour in terms of salary they, they, they foresee a lot that oversee a lot of the salary for you and you only pay a little bit but then they retain you know the rewards if that player does well so much of signing a player on loan comes down to personality, doesn't it? I mean, of course it does when you sign a player permanently as well, but I'm thinking of a player who turns up at a club and will be there for a month or maybe three months. You need them to be able to hit the ground running. You need to be able to, to, need them to, be able to buy into to your ethos as, as a football club and as a management team as well. But how hard is it to, to find those, and especially in the, the time scale that you have available? It's difficult to find the perfect specimen for the monies we've got available, but what I can assure the supporters of not scouting. I mean, we, we got accused when we first came in of having a squad that, that, that to, to the naked eye, fans didn't would think were underachieving and weren't, you know, they weren't dying for the cause. I mean, the, and, and the first thing that Sean and I insist on when we sign a loan player is attitude. It's actually attitude, it's not ability, it's actually attitude. Obviously, they need ability, they wouldn't be at the clubs they were at, I think, of a. Mm. But one that had a poor attitude, you know, he didn't, he didn't, I don't think he lasted the whole month with us, you know, and, and he was a very, very talented player. But most of them we've insisted, and, and most of the loan signings we've had, whether they've been fantastic footballers or not, have given almost everything they've got in the locker every single game. You look at Louis, you look at Stephen, you look at Zelly, you look at Jake. I don't think many people could, could criticise the work ethic and, and the attitude and, and the way they, they were around the club. And, and all, I have to say, all four of them went out at Christmas on our Christmas party with our players rather than with their parent clubs because they felt part of the club and part of the first team. Now that tells you that we've got the right characters in and there's a lot of homework, a lot of research goes into that. You know, we, I mean, we made, we probably made five calls as well as speaking to Glyn Snodding and, and even the chairman of, of Preston about Will Hayhurst. I spoke to five different people about Will and they were all about his character because I knew him as a player. I just wanted to find out about his character. And there wasn't even one doubt that Will, good, bad or indifferent performance, would ever give you anything less than 100%. And Will was on his knees on, on, on Saturday in the game, actually on his knees, hands and knees, after about 80 minutes. Are you fit to carry on? He lifted his thumbs up wearily and carried on and actually missed a sitter. But he carried on, didn't he? Do you know, but it was just through, I think, sheer exhaustion that the, the one at the far post was probably down to tiredness. But that was Will. And I think if we can get that type of energy out of Will every week, I don't think any Notts County fans are ever going to criticise the signing of Will Hayhurst, which is an absolute testimony to, 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 to the manager and, and the recruitment team for bringing in the right people and the board and Jim for supporting what we were trying to do because they've made that one permanent on our say so. You know, and we've, we have to go and have powerful arguments to everybody because Jim's our taskmaster. Our task, and I think he's had to be because of the way that he hasn't had value for money over, over you know, the last couple of years. I hope that's a fair statement. That's not to try and be critical of anybody. I think, hope that's a fair and factual statement. So Jim puts us to test and we have to be powerful with Jim and, and we, we persuaded Jim to make Will permanent rather than... See, the problem you've got if Willard are coming on low is if he has seven or eight good games... Sheffield United, Barnsley, MK Dons, Bristol City, take him for right from under your nose because they're more powerful financially than what we are. So ours is slightly a, a gamble because we're taking players before they've really hit the heights, the dizzy heights. So, you know, but we think Will, if he continues like he is, he could be one of them players that we're saying, yeah, we've brought him in, we've developed him and he's gone to the next level and everybody's won. Uh, the board over the years have had a bit of stick for reducing the, 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 the budget available to managers over the last uh, few years. If you're going to make this club less reliant on loan players, do you need a bigger budget? And if so, do you think you're going to get it? I think we've got a really competitive budget for next season. The chairman's already spoke to us about it. You know, he's, he sat me and Sean down quite clearly. And, 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 and what the supporters need to know that is every business, if it's got X to spend, can't spend Y. You can only spend X. Now, there's not many people that will invest money knowing they're not going to get it back. There's not many people do that. Now our chairman does, because the money he puts into the football club, I don't think he's got a cat and house chance of getting that money back. So the chairman says to us, he can afford to put in this amount, and we have to then deal with that amount as cost effective and, as, and getting as much as we can out of that situation. Now the answer to your question is, come the start of next season, every player we bring into, that's in this football club will be a player that Sean Derry and Greg Abbott have brought in because the cycle of the other two year contracts has finished, all the two year deals of ex So if we keep, let's for instance say, if we keep Curtis Thompson at his club, it's because we've chose to keep him, because his contract runs out. 
and all the contracts from any other regime finishes on May the th uh, on June the 30th this year. So anybody that's here next year is our call. And the chairman has told us the figure, and I can assure the fans it's a competitive figure, and it's it's it won't be the biggest in the league by a long way. But you're never going to be able to put in the type of money that the Bristol Cities, the Barnsleys, the Sheffield Uniteds are. But it's a competitive. And, and manageable amount of money that I think we can get some really good players in and play the type of football that I know that fans are craving for but at the minute you can only play a certain type of football with the amount of money sometimes that you've got available it's really really strong recruitment and I think we're, we've recruited pretty well because like I said to you the first statement I made was we're sitting here one win off the playoffs with a game in hand on most of the teams above us and I think that's pretty pretty decent from the day that we walked in and it was a flat club, it was a dull club, and everybody was moping round. There's a lot of people going round with smiley faces at the minute. I know the last four or five weeks hasn't been pretty, and it's been hard. But we told Ray and we told Aileen that it would be, because we had to go to the likes of Bristol City, MK Dons, Bradford, uh, Preston, Swindon. At the time when all them loan signings had to go back in the middle of December, and that is what's something we have to avoid going forward next season where we know we can get to the to the, the start of the window without you know taking taking people as, as, as good influentially good players out of the situation in the middle of December absolutely killed us I must just finally ask you about uh, Ballant Biner I think you pronounce it a big striker at, uh, at Ipswich there's been lots of talk over the last few days uh, Lee Johnson saying that they've missed out on, on him because he was going to Notts we didn't see him at the weekend but what is the situation with Ballant <laughs> Ballin Biner, big striker. Ballin Biner. You'll have to ask Sean about him. I've not really come across that name much, apart from when I met him illegally. <laughs> <laughs> no, but listen, Ballin's one that we've. I think it's, it's common knowledge that we've needed a proper number nine to, to you know to to cope with Jimmy's you know Jimmy's absence this season, which was a still a blow that we probably won't recover from. But we've had to you know we've had to not use it as an excuse. We've just had to get on with it. And you know Jake for all his energy and work, you know probably didn't get enough goals. And the, and the cost involved with Jake was 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 was, was strong from Wolves. Um, we've looked and we've looked and we've exhausted every sort of possibility and every name that probably all the supporters have come up with. We've already had on our radar, but for one reason or another, we can't get into the building. Balance one that, uh, through uh, you know, a lot of help from Ipswich and, and Mick McCarthy in particular, we feel might be might be one that we can make happen at some point this week. But there's still a little bit of work to do in terms of Balint and uh, his, his personal circumstances with Ipswich. But if we can make it happen. We certainly will do, and uh, I think that then would give us a, a powerful number nine. But at the minute, it's just one that we've, we've, we've shown a, a real firm interest in. And I can't say fair than that. I don't want to lead the fans up a garden path. There's a firm interest in Ballant, and if we can make it happen, we've got the support of the chairman yet again, and uh, we will try and do that. Stuff. Thank you very much. Um, just interesting, I mean, on the subject of transfer, how do you go about sourcing these players? Yeah, do they come through agents do, or do they come through tip offs from other managers? You know, or your contacts within the game, especially for people like Alefi and um, and Kwame. Yeah, I, I think to be honest, Lee, you've actually given me the names of players, haven't you? Mm. Which is fantastic. You've actually given me the. So what I do is I take names off anybody. You know, and what we do then is we look at them and look at the credibility behind, behind sometimes behind the person, then behind the player. We look where they've been, what age they are, and we start to build a picture up of, of that particular player. Now, obviously, some of the agents throw anybody at you. Yeah. You know, we've got a lot of. Con I've been in probably 30, am I on 35 years yeah. with a four-week unbroken spell in the Championship yeah. and League One. Yeah. So I've got some contacts. So we exhaust that, and then we look at all the players available compile a list of players and positions that we need then we compile players for that position and then we go and do our due diligence on trying to find out which is the best one and which are out of the affordable ones because there's a bracket there's yeah. a bracket in terms of finance of where we can get to and then we go and do all our research and and and, and there's one i have to say there's one that you gave me that we're really keen on and we're looking at his personal situation at a particular club so it, it, it they can come from a whole host of different but again an area of the football club we thought needed we needed assistance and, and, and looking at was recruitment and I, hopefully we're gonna we're gonna be able to bring somebody in this week mm -hmm. who will actually take over that role as their direct responsibility. I will assist them because probably at this without trying to be any without self promotion without trying to sound I know I've got more knowledge of this league here than yeah. at the minute than probably most. So I, I want to help the person in terms of what we've already got, the contacts I've got. 
the information on the players we've got and we, we look at them all and, and at the end of the day the manager will make the final decision on all the information supplied and you know we work particularly hard because you know one of the reasons I'm here is for, is for Sean Derry because I want to make sure he's a success and, and I want to make sure he gets his second job because in football if you if you fail at your first job there's a lot of managers you don't see again so I have a real responsibility in that respect to make sure I, I bring to the table the right type of players for Sean to, to think about and, and, and bring into the club to hopefully see it develop and where we've been financially um, because of again an overspend mm. and an undervalue of, of, of that spend I think we've done particularly well Lee and we've got some really nice players into the club I'd love to get that player in that, that, that will bring the bums off seats and bring the bums onto seats in the first place, but bring them off the seats, you know, going forward. And uh, I think that's a key. And everybody would love to win games four and five nil, playing like um, yeah, you know the, the Brazilian side or, or the Barcelona side. Do you know what? Sometimes the, the, a nice way at League One though is to get the ball into box, is to have shots, is to have crosses, is to win the second ball, is to make tackles, and because probably with the quality that we're going to get at this level you know only the top four or five teams can win the league playing the absolute perfect game if there is a perfect game because I think sometimes crosses and shots and, and things like that are as exciting as the tippy tappy stuff and Sam Allardyce made a great point today in the, in, in, in press that this tap, tippy tappy style they were playing first half got them nowhere yeah. you know actually got them nowhere it wasn't until they started putting the ball in the right areas and getting the ball to cause defenders problems that they actually had their joy in the game against um Whole city yesterday. A goal's a goal, which no matter which way you score. I don't mind. A goal is a goal, and you've seen. I think <laughs> Goufran scored a goal that he didn't even know where the ball was coming from, yeah. but he was in there challenging and gets one off his kneecap. Which, listen, at times in the last four or five weeks, we'd have settled for one off a kneecap. But listen, hopefully that little period's done. We, we've, we, and that's why the result on Saturday was so important. Hopefully we can put it behind us. We knew, we knew it would be a tough period. You know, we we, we actually sat Ray and, and Aileen down and told them where we would be, and, and Ray said, "Listen, get through it." get as many points as you can and, and do your best and then get the window open and this is the figure and I've never been given a figure before ever See, in all my time Ray said that's what you've got on a weekly basis to improve the squad and fair play to him he's given us a, a really decent figure to, to get some players in again they're not going to be the, 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 the Matt Smiths of, of this world but they're, they're, they're going to be players that will help us improve and hopefully gain the form and, and, and the winning habit that we had before before we lost some of the previous loan players and in terms of names that get thrown, I mean, do you get a lot of names thrown at you in the window through agents? And is it a case of, I mean, have you now formed your own database? Do you know what I mean? Because I imagine agents are probably going to look to do a lot of business during January. No, they do. Just... I mean, listen, I've got a, we've got an unbelievable database that we've built up. It's it probably got a thousand names in it, and then we've got a database that's narrowed down to probably sixty or seventy names in it mm. that we've took out of that. But we, yeah. we we continue to try and build up as much information about all the ones in the day because we've got names in there that that we can go for if we actually make it to the championship. Yeah. There's names in there that if ever anything drastic happened and we went down a bit or, 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 or funds got lower, that we can hit the bottom end of the market. So there's there's names there all for, the for all seasons. For all seasons, yeah, yeah. all the eventually. And that's took, that's took 11, 13, 14 months yeah. to build up. And we will hand that over to the new head of recruitment and he will then like, just manage that database. But, you know, it, straight away, if you gave me a name, instantly I'd know if it was a yes, no, or a maybe. Mm. You know, and if it's a no, we've been it, we don't waste any time because the resources this don't allow you to waste time we've got to use our day and, and use it you know and get as much out of the day as we possibly can so if an agent gives me a name I look at it I'll know instantly it's a definite no it's a definite yes goes into the smaller directory it's a maybe goes into the bigger directory it's an easy a one two or a three file it's a filing system really um, because there's not many people that get thrown at you that you don't know about mm. and if you don't know about them generally they're not what you're looking for because Top quality players don't just arrive on your doorstep at the teams like Carlisle United and, and Notts yeah. County. They don't just arrive where you think, wow, an agent's given me, I've got to get him in tomorrow. Yeah. That don't happen. No. It, it just don't. It's not quite as easy as that. Brilliant, mate. Oh, just, sorry, just looking, we've touched on it. I know a lot of the focus is on January at the minute and this season, but when do you start making decisions on, I suppose, this, what you've got now and what you want from what you've got already? To take forwards and what you're going to bring in then obviously I suppose looking ahead to the summer transfer window yeah I think we're already doing that by the by the signing a will on a permanent we've identified that we need a wide player certainly a left-sided wide player so why sign that position as a lone player when you know you're going to need one next season anyway because we've got nobody else in the football club that can play high and wide on the left-hand side we've actually got nobody 
if you take Gary out at the moment and who's playing down down the middle to play high and wide on the right so them particular ones can be permanent ones that we can do now and if we can get them now cheaper than we'll get them in the summer or we can get them now because there'll be more clubs looking at them in the summer to offer them more deals and we do them now Jamie so we're already we've made signings for now and we've made signings for next season already in this winter I suppose but also are you making are you forming stronger opinions of the players whose contracts are coming to us then as well I think in the manager's mind he knows out of the ones already which ones he wants to keep to take him forward so I've got the, the, the added advantage of knowing what I'm looking for because he's going to keep X he might be looking to let Y go hopefully you're hoping the, one, the Y that he's going to let go will do enough to change your opinion because we have got some fantastic people at this football club in terms of players I don't think we've had anybody knock the door the manager's door absolutely upset with what's going on you know we've had a few frustrated at lack of first team football but nobody can say or nobody's come and said they've been treated unfairly so everybody we've got here there's a real closeness about the playing staff and the, and the management staff and that's took 13 14 months to build up and and, you, and after the game at Bristol City if you were anywhere near the dressing room you wouldn't have heard people falling out you would have heard a management team offering the support and help and assistance to the players and in return we need a little bit more belief and a little bit more design a little bit more determination but we did say it's probably come to a time where we need to bring one or two players in to help you because you've been fantastic in terms of what you've achieved so far the first half of the season and that's the type of group we've got Jamie so it would be for me I don't want to see anybody not here next season but it's inevitable that's football that one or two of them that you think and you've you've grown to really really like you know that will you know eventually will have to leave the club and you know you just wish them well and hope that you know they prove you wrong but you know that's a period coming for this but I probably know most of them decisions now. Well, we've got you because I know Sean doesn't like talking about it, but the age the age number I know we've touched on it sort of briefly earlier, but you obviously the the two lads that we've brought in sort of Billy and, and Will are young lads and they've got that potential. Is it sometimes more difficult to bring in sort of the lads? 24, 25, as well as when you're talking your 35, 36. We've seen from Gary Jones that age literally is, is the perfect example of age is just a number, but at the same time, there is a finite amount of time that he'll be able to carry on for. Yeah, I mean, I think what you get, if you're buying players at 24, 25, they've already had 100, 150, they're proven players. So the, the money, you, and they're at the peak of their career, and they're only going to get better for the next two, three years. So you're buying them at their actual peak value. Gary Jones wasn't at his peak value because he was 37. Billy Daniels isn't at his peak value because he's only played an handful of games. So you get Gary Jones cheap, you get Billy Daniels cheap. You're hoping Gary does the job, which which he absolutely has, by the way, up to now, for the for the value we paid him. And we're hoping Billy, and we're actually paying Billy very very minimal wages, develops his game. And if he can continue like he did, you know, Saturday with the type of quality he's got. Now I really like Billy. I've liked him since he played against us when I was at Carlisle. I liked him and. I was surprised that anybody with 20 odd first team games by the age of 19 was allowed to leave for for nothing for such for such you know minimal wages. Billy could go on and be hopefully he's he's, he's one that we've got right and somebody else has got wrong. The 24 year olds come at peak peak time money you know and that's why you know we'd love to get we need two or three 20 because they've got the energy but they've got a bit of experience they've not you know they've not passed their sell by date. But having sell, said that. Gary Jones has shown a lot of energy this year, but he, you know, a fact of life is he can't go on forever. If you ask Gary, he'll, he'll tell you he's got another three years in him. He's been unbelievable. So is Tomo, and um, and and Aidan Mullins for me was like a Rolls Royce on Saturday. I thought he was absolutely magnificent, and there's probably another year at least in Aidan as a centre half at League One level, if not more. The way he plays the game, he reads it and, and understands it so well. Thanks for giving us an insight, guys. Thank you very much. All right, guys.